Okay. So let's do the screen share. So this is going to be a quick video about how to set up um, multiple t-tests on um, in Perseo. So you can run all the t-tests that you want to do from all the different uh, groups that you have all at once. So here I have a matrix that has already been um, for missing values have been replaced, rows have been filtered out, I think all, all these things have been done, and of course, categories have been added. So what I do now, if I want to run uh, many, many t-tests all at once, I go to select the two sample t-tests, uh, the two sample tests, sorry, hasn't been in a while that I haven't done this. And now you can basically generate all pairings that you want to test as pairs by um, selecting the things that you want to test against the other things that you want to test. So for example, I'm testing TM0 against HL underscore HSO. If I now want to run also um, comparison of TM0 against the next thing in the list, I would select that and so on and so forth. If I, so basically, it can get a little tricky when you have a lot, but basically you can make all the comparisons that you want, uh, set them all up at once um, by doing this. So everything that, you know, the first thing in the row up here will be compared against the first thing in the row here. First, second thing in the row up here will be compared against the second thing in the row down here. So, right, we could add many more just following the same uh, scheme. Um, Ultimately, you know, if you do it smartly, you can really do all the comparisons. Of course, there's a lot of comparisons to set up, but that will run all the tests together. You can then um, select which test you actually want to run. Do you want to run the student's t-test or the wax test, depending on uh, how you think your data is distributed or if you actually test it for distribution of your data. You can set the S0, um, which is an important criterion. Oftentimes, we, if we have data where we want to look particularly for things that have strong differences, but also high variance. You can, uh, for example, select, say, one. Um, oftentimes, it's good to actually check this out with a volcano plot first. You can check if it's a one or bo a both sided test um, and add a valid value filter, although we usually filter um, our data already based on valid values beforehand. So we exclude this. Um, then you select how you want to calculate your false discovery rates for this test. Um, usually the choice is between permutation-based or Benjamin Hochberg. You know, you can learn more. Ultimately, both give you similar outputs, so it doesn't really matter. I personally find the permutation-based more intuitive on how it actually works, but uh, I think it has also well been well shown that the Benjamin Hochberg works just as well. Uh, you select what your uh, false discovery rate cutoff is that you want to achieve for significance. And um, it's always good to have the Q values reported because they give you a really good measure of the confidence you can have in specific proteins. I will leave the number as, uh, of uh, randomizations as is. Preserve groupings in randomizations. I would only do if you actually have technical replicate data, which it, this is not the case here. If you have biological replicate data, you don't have to worry about this. But if you have multiple technical replicates per sample, then you want to actually um, preserve that grouping uh, potentially within the randomizations. And then you can choose how you want to display your um, e values as e either on the log scale or if you uncheck this they will be shown as plain uh, text p values and then you just run it it might take a while depending on how many tests you're actually running and then you get actually two matrices as output so all the tests are summarized in just two output matrices so one matrix um, shows you test. So here, you know, TM00 was tested against this other sample uh, type. And then it will um, give you basically a list of all the accession numbers that were significant, significant under this testing scheme. So this is more of a computer um, readable format. It will also give you all the P values and Q values and so on and so forth. So this is really good if you want to subsequently process this uh, with other computational data processing methods. The other matrix that you get is actually a matrix that is more what you would need if you now want to take this data, export it, and integrate it with, for example, your NSAF table. Um, so here, what you get is you uh, get all your 
um, NSF values. If they're NSF values or whatever, if you work with CLR, you would be having your CLR values. You have your accession number somewhere here. Well, okay, here in this case, they actually had the end, the accession numbers and descriptions are at the end. And then you have columns that actually tell you which um, of the t-tests were actually significant. So for each t-test, you get its own column. So now it could, so for example, uh, sort for significance for this particular test that was carried out, you get all the significance with a plus. Um, you know, same is true for this test that was carried out. Now you can sort it by this one. And of course, you also get all the associated um, values. So here's actually a summary that will actually tell you for this particular protein, which tests actually came back as significant under the FDR that you uh, specified. And then you have here um, respective p-values for the specific test, and I think somewhere also the q-value. So you get all this data that you can then integrate and analyze first or in, a, in another tool. And so that's that. Um, that's all I wanted to show today is just how to run all the t-tests from your data set all at once. Um, so you have one simple output that then you can more easily process downstream.